Oh, what are you doing, lad? Drawing singing. What? Singing. Is it a person? A goddess, Loki's wife. Oh, yes, of course, of course. You still don't know, do you? Uh, of course I know it. It's... Uh, uh, no. It's, it's okay. Well, it's been almost a thousand years, lad. My memories are the same. Yeah, of course. Guys, do you know who Sigyn is? Guys? Hey, guys! <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> Sorry, sir. What? What? What were you asking? I was asking if you know who Sigyn is. <laughs> All right. So let's get to it. Hello, friends. My name is Ari Thurger, and today I'm going to talk about Sigyn. Well, some of you asked me after I did that video of Loki. Uh, asked me to make a video about Sigyn and I thought well why not if I have talked about Loki it's only right that I talk about his wife and maybe in the future why not talk about all the gods somehow connected with Loki Loki's household uh, it's always good to put a little bit of information out there about the gods people seldom heard of or are usually put aside for some reason also Speaking about Loki, this video, the introduction to the god Loki, is my very first video with multiple subtitles, which means that, aside from English, it also has subtitles in Portuguese, Spanish and French. And I want to thank Vanessa Nunes and Gassam Nasri, and I'm sorry if, I, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I want to thank you guys for the the translation, the subtitles in those languages. And I want to tell everyone that all my videos are now open to be uh, translated to, to have subtitles in your own languages. So if you want to contribute, now you can do it. All right, now let's get started. So who is Sigyn? The goddess Sigyn is the wife of Loki, and she is mentioned in both the prose Edda and the poetic Edda as the one who assists Loki during his imprisonment. But it seems rather unfair to be mentioned only as a deity whose sole purpose is to assist another deity. However, there are a few archaeological findings concerning Sigyn, but only too few and still pose no clue to the true nature of this goddess. Although it is clear that our ancestors praised her enough to create her image, her figure, in objects. Now, as you probably know, Sigyn uh, is mentioned in the books Gilfaginning and Skaldkaparmal. She is, of course, introduced as Loki's wife, and the couple have two sons, Narfi and Vali. Well, Narfi is cocked by the gods and transformed into a wolf as a form of punishment and torture. In his raging madness, he kills his brother, Vali, and Vali's guts are used to bound Loki in his captivity. Now, it couldn't be more grotesque and devastating for Sigyn to witness such cruelty inflicted upon her sons. And this is exactly where I want to get. Sigyn is perhaps best known as her faithfulness during the period when Loki was imprisoned in a cave and was tormented by a terrible venomous snake which was placed there by Skadi, but it was a torturing device uh, demanded by the gods. So Sigyn is the goddess of loyalty and compassion. And she's perhaps the most compassionate deity in the Norse pantheon. And this loyalty is not only to her husband, but to her own kin. You have to understand that she is an Ausinia, and this is the feminine term for Aesir. So she belongs to the tribe of gods who have imprisoned and tortured her husband, but also have killed her sons, and still she remained loyal to her own kin. 
And in this loyalty, there is a good amount of courage. Because, like all women, and please correct me if I'm wrong, women can forgive, but they will never forget. When her children met tragic hands, she became the goddess of grieving and the goddess of nurturing because she kept taking care of Loki. And she is the goddess that can be praised by those whose spirits have been broken and are grieving. She can be praised by the, those who have lost their children and seek a way to diminish that maddening sadness that obviously stains one's soul. This story in how she lost her children is a reminder of all of those who have been unjustly killed or came to any harm or driven to mental illness by unfair circumstances beyond their control. So this is a goddess that can be praised not to to seek justice but to find inner peace. Now for those who want to praise her and do the kind of worshipping that requires an altar, you have to know that she comes in various aspects like many pagan deities. For instance, Odin comes in uh, an aspect of the wanderer or in his warrior aspect and so Sigyn also have um, many aspects. She can be the young uh, innocent bride or the loyal and uh, nurturing mother and also the grieving mother. So she, is, she, she has these three aspects and according to each aspect you want to praise, uh, your altar should have different colors. For instance, for the innocent young bride, uh, you should put um, white and blue. For the loyal and nurturing mother, you maybe want to add lavender and pink. And for the grieving mother, dark colors such as browns and shades of grey and perhaps black. And of course there are offerings to her. If you want to praise her innocent young bride's side, maybe you want to offer to her cakes made by you. And if you want to praise the nurturing mother aspect, you would like to offer to her fresh milk and bread. And of course there are some of you who like to dress themselves to worship a specific deity and in that case well it's it's rather simple you would like maybe to dress with the colors I have mentioned before never forget that in any folktale and mythological account there is always truth in it and also a lesson to be taken never forget those who have been unjustly wronged and give more value to those who are loyal to a cause loyal to their own kin family and loved ones. Well friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. All the links to my social media are down below at the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video and of course, tak for it all.